Hey there, in this video we're going to talk about helping students design their artwork for their podcast. This is an important part of the project because I think for any podcast you really do create artwork. It really is one of the first impressions you make on your listener and it's a vital part. And so helping students to get one of the big ideas to convey the main concepts of their podcast through their artwork is a cool part of the process and one I think that they're going to enjoy. You do not have to use any fancy tools for this. They could design their cover art with pencil and paper, or they could design it in PowerPoint or slides. But if you want to give them the real professional version, I would have them design using the free online tool Canva. So that's what I'm going to be walking you through today. But I'm starting here at the Apple Podcasts Resource Center with this information about how to design artwork for a real podcast that you're going to publish out to the world. I think the more that you can show students that they're creating something that they actually could share um, with an audience of, you know, potentially hundreds, thousands, millions, of people, um, that really helps them to have buy-in and to see how their project is relevant to the world. And so if you let them know that if they create the right size of artwork and they get really into their podcasting project, they actually could submit it to Apple Podcasts or Spotify, Stitcher, any of the big um, platforms that might help them to feel more invested in it. So Apple gives a few best practices, one of which is to include their title on their cover, one of which is to keep the artwork pretty simple so that it's easy to recognize even when it's tiny. Um, and one is to have this certain size of 3000 by 3000 pixels. So they may not even know what a pixel is, but it doesn't really matter. They're gonna be creating a square image and they can type in these numbers, 3000 by 3000 pixels into Canva, as I'm gonna show you here in a second. So you're gonna go to Canva. Canva is a free online tool that I absolutely love using and I think it has so many classroom uses. So I really recommend that you bite the bullet, get familiar with Canva. It's not as hard as it seems. If your students are younger than high school age, um, they will need parent permission to get onto Canva. Although in all of my time of using it, and I use it for many, many things, I use it every single day, I have never seen a single inappropriate thing on Canva. So I don't feel worried about it, but rules are rules. So if you have younger kids, you should, you should get their parents' permission. But if you have high school students, it's a little more straightforward. You can go into Canva and open up a free account. I already have an account, so I, I was able to skip that step. Then from their main page here, there are a lot of different things you can create, including social media posts, posters, infographics. But for this project, students are just going to go to create a design and they're going to put in those custom dimensions that they just learned from Apple Podcasts. So they want 3000 by 3000 pixels. In practical terms, what that's going to give them is a square, just like you see on podcast covers. And now they have a whole bunch of options here across the left. Um, on this menu bar. They can upload their own images, photos that they've taken or artwork that they've scanned in. They can use the library of images that Canva has available. It's a little bit more limited with a free account than with a Canva for Education account. So that might be something you could consider applying for in the future, but the limited version is pretty fine. Um, then you go to elements. Sorry, I should just show you. This is what the photo section looks like. You can search for different kinds of photos. Then you can go to elements and that's where you're gonna find all different sorts of shapes and icons and lines and decorative banners and glitter and anything else you can think of. You can go to the tech section and you'll find all these different cute overlay texts or just kind of basic fonts that, that then you can manipulate like you would in Google Slides, except that there are like a thousand options. And then if you go further, you can get down to this backgrounds where you can put like textured paper or um, sort of a more abstract photo in the background of your design. So let's say I am creating an example podcast as a student and my podcast is gonna be about music. I am going to start with the title of my podcast. Let's call my podcast um, more music. Once I 
put in a word, I can drag it to make it bigger, or I can um, adjust it up here in this top bar. So I'm going to put more. Mm, that's so small, I can't even see it. So let's get it a little bigger. More music. And if you want to teach students a little bit about basic design, you can suggest that they kind of have one more decorative font and one more basic font. You can suggest that they not go too crazy with their colors. Usually kind of one or two colors are the way to go. Um, so there I have my more music. I'm going to go with red and black as my colors. So I can go up there. When I click this letter with the colorful bar under it, then I can change to any color. Over here, I can go to new color to find a huge gradient of colors that I can explore. And now I wanna put in some shapes. So I'm gonna go to elements and I'm gonna choose a rectangle. I'm gonna drop it on there by clicking it. And now I can resize it and put it behind my word more, make it black. So here now I have more music. Now, is this enough? Do you think this would be a good podcast cover? I don't think so. I think I need more. So maybe I wanna use um, a photo and I wanna put in something like a piano. I think that's kind of cool. So maybe I want to put it across the top. I can drag it to resize it. I can crop it however I want to. So it's getting a little big. Maybe I'm going to try that. More music. Now I'm looking at it and I'm thinking, mm, it's kind of pink there on the piano and it's it doesn't really match my red. Maybe I want to change this more to white. And what about across the bottom? So empty across the bottom. What am I going to do there? Maybe I'm going to go to elements and I'm going to put in music notes. And I'm looking at all these fun music notes and I'm thinking, yeah, this could work. I could put a few music notes across the bottom. They seem to be white. When you add an icon or an image like this from elements and it's not a photo, you can usually change the color. So I can go in and adjust the color. I can adjust the size. I can rotate the size. If I like it there and I want a few of them, I can go up to this little duplicate button up here. I can make another one. I can rotate it again. Maybe I'm going to duplicate it again. And there we go. Now, I feel like I need some more colors down here. Maybe I'll go with some lines. And do some rotating. Now... If I go to here, I can choose some different colors that are in the photo. So it's showing me photos that are, or colors that are in that keyboard up there. So maybe I choose that blue and I duplicate it. And then I choose the green and then I duplicate it. And then I choose the purple. And so then my colors have kind of come across. I think, you know, there it is. <laughs> it's not the most incredible podcast cover ever, but I did make it in two and a half minutes. And it gives you sort of a sense. You can put in photos, you can put in shapes, you can put in different types of text, you can put in little icons or symbols, you can put in and adjust the color of other types of shapes like lines. And that is kind of the basics. When you get the podcast cover how you want it, you go up here to download. I suggest you download it as a PNG image. Click download and takes a few seconds to prepare your design and then it's gonna show up for you and you can save it 
as maybe more music to your desktop. And now students have that available um, for whatever their next step is going to be in their podcast creation, whether you're using um, the Google templates that I suggest in my podcast curriculum, or if you're going another way, like you're having them use Anchor as a public platform to submit their podcast, or maybe they're going all the way and submitting right away to Apple Podcasts. This is what they need, so now they have it. Mm -hmm.